Brake systems on a hybrid are a bit more complex than on a normal vehicle. So let's start with three terms that we have to understand. One, regenerative braking. Magnetic friction in the motor generator that slowly reduces the vehicle's kinetic energy to scrub off the vehicle's speed. Regenerative braking comes from the electric motors being changed into generators. The north-south pole attraction to make the motor spin is now reversed so that we have north to north pole, south to south pole to slow the motor down. Conventional or friction braking, that's normal disc pads and brake shoe braking. Hybrid braking is a combination of both of the above. It's a combination of regenerative and conventional braking. The Prius brake control ECU is really the EBCM, electronic brake control module. It is really the ABS module. It is really the vehicle stability module. It is really the traction control module. What's going on here? It even includes the proportioning valve function. All of these together are called the skid control ECU. So the skid control ECU is really the ECU for the proportioning valve, the traction, the vehicle stability, ABS, and EBCM. It is called the skid control ECU. It's behind the dash. Now brake torque is scan data talk. It's a PID. Brake force is brake torque in scan data. And it's calculated by the skid control ECU and is displayed as torque. There's two braking systems. The first is a conventional set of brakes. The other is regenerative braking system, which relies on the resistance of the electrical motors. Regenerative braking does a couple of things. Slows the vehicle down, but not entirely. The conventional brakes bring it to a stop. While the vehicle is slowing down, it charges the high voltage battery pack. Now, if you need to have more information or review the motor generator and their operations refer to the class hybrid operation and diagnostics. And here we've drawn a uh, brake system. The blue is the electric brake system, the regenerative braking, and the yellow is the hydraulic brake system. There is a braking sequence to a hybrid. A certain sequence is going to take place every time the brakes are applied. One, the skid control ECU calculates the total braking force required based on its inputs. The skid ECU then sends the total brake torque requirement to the hybrid control ECU. Three, the hybrid control ECU determines the amount of regenerative braking that will be required. And then four, the hybrid ECU sends the friction brake requirements back to the skid control ECU. The skid control ECU applies the proper hydraulic pressure to the system so that we can have braking from friction. Six, this sequence is constantly updating as the vehicle slows down. And that's so we can blend regenerative braking and friction braking as the speed changes. The skid control ECU calculates the total braking force required based on its input. Isn't that what we just said? That inputs are the stoplight switch, the speed sensors, and the brake pedal stroke sensor. Data from the CAN bus is also used for this calculation. And that is the yaw rate sensor and the steering angle sensor. And we're going to use this block drawing several times here in order to explain all this. The skid ECU is going to be hardwired with the stoplight switch, the speed sensors, and the brake pedal stroke sensor. That are some of the inputs. And then the other inputs come from the CAN bus. The stability control inputs are coming from there. 
and that is the steering angle and the yaw rank and the electronic uh, power steering ECU and that all comes uh, through CAN. The skid control ECU then sends the total brake torque requirement to the hybrid control ECU on the CAN bus. The hybrid controller sends the friction brake requirements back to the skid control ECU on the CAN bus. The skid control ECU applies the proper hydraulic pressure to supply the braking from the friction. So we said that twice now using diagrams the second time. The skid control ECU applies the power hydraulic pressure to supply the braking from friction. That's the third time now. So look, we have the skid control ECU there. And on the other side, we have the hydraulic control unit for the hydraulic brakes. This sequence constantly is going to update, just as we said, because it needs to blend regenerative braking with friction braking. The internal combustion engine, the braking system, the electric motors are all coordinated by the hybrid control ECU. We're talking about the skid control ECU right now, but we have to remember that the ice, the brakes, the electric motors are all coordinated by the hybrid control ECU. The hybrid control ECU takes inputs from some of the same places the skid control ECU gets. Now look, the skid control is getting speed, yaw, uh, deceleration rate sensor, steering angle, stroke sensor, and then it's telling the um, hybrid control ECU what it saw on the CAN bus. The engine controller, the ECM, is taking its inputs and telling the hybrid control ECU what it saw. And then it's going to control the inverter and it's going to control the motor generators. So it is what does all the coordination as well as coordinating the ICE or the internal combustion engine. The skid control ECU controls and monitors a number of things. It must perform the following functions. It has to receive inputs from pressure sensors for the accumulator, master cylinder, and the wheel cylinders. It controls the stroke simulator and that gives the motorist the feel of a conventional brake during hybrid braking. It controls the relays to the power up the skid control components and that is going to require B+. Monitors wheel speed and functions as an ABS controller. Remember when we started this section, we said that the EBCM and the ABS controller is really called the skid control uh, ECU. So, of course, it's going to monitor the wheel speed uh, in order to function as an ABS controller. Uh, it's going to receive sensor information about the brake pedal input from the motorist that is used that to calculate that braking torque requirement that it sends to the hybrid control ECU. And now the hybrid control ECU is going to determine the amount of regenerative braking and friction braking and send that information out to the inverter and the skid control. So the skid control gives us our friction, uh, friction braking and our inverter gives us our regenerative braking from the motor generators. The skid control ECU function acts as the ECU for the vehicle stability control system and receives data from the yaw rate sensor and steering angle information through the CAN bus. It provides vehicle speed to the combination meter, the dashboard, the speedometer, and other systems that need speed data from the combination meter. Now we're going to use this drawing for a while here. We're going to change some things on it, so don't go to sleep on me. We said it receives the skid control ECU, receives input from pressure sensors for the accumulator, master cylinder, and wheel cylinders. So here is the pressure sensor for the accumulator and here are the two for the master cylinder. Here are the four for the wheel cylinders. We said it controls the stroke simulator that gives the motors the feel of a conventional brake. And there's the 
Stroke Simulator. Talk a little bit more about that, a little bit. Now, it controls the relays to power the skid control components that need the B+. Here we're looking at an ABS relay and an ABS motor relay too. It monitors wheel speed so it can function as an ABS controller. It receives sensor information about the brake input from the motor, motorist, and that's used to calculate brake torquing, uh, brake torque requirement. And then, of course, it communicates with the hybrid control ECU to determine the amount of regenerative braking from the electric motor slash generators. It also acts as the vehicle stability control system ECU. So it receives data from the yaw rate and steering angle sensors over the CAN bus we said. And it's going to provide vehicle speed to the dashboard or the combination meter for speedometer and other systems that need speed data. It's going to control all of this by being powered by the 12 volt system. So the brake control skid ECU has a power supply. Part of it is the auxiliary battery, the 12 volt battery, but we're going to need a backup source if something goes wrong with the 12 volt battery. The power supply has multiple capacitors that can store energy, electrical energy, to get this vehicle stopped uh, several times. So we can see that the skid control ECU is powered by the auxiliary battery, but the auxiliary battery has a backup. Now that's that black box down at the bottom there sitting beside the 12 volt auxiliary battery. When we open it, the capacitors cells store and discharge energy when it's needed. So that's how it becomes a backup unit. Now, the capacitor cells are going to discharge when the power's off. So way back in safety, we told you, make sure you wait 15 minutes for the capacitors to discharge. You certainly don't want these 28 fully charged capacitors discharging through your body. The wheel speed sensors supply individual wheel speed for ABS operation and vehicle speed information to the control ECU. And we've dealt with wheel speed sensor, the permanent magnet type sensor that has a gear rotor reluctor for many years now in ABS. They are the same. So when we look at them, they are the same sensors we've been working with, yielding the same waveform that we've been working with. Brake pedal stroke sensors uh, measure the brake pedal movement. This is an input into the skid control ECU. It's used for that brake torque calculation. One thing you need to note that the brake pedal stroke sensor leads that go to the skid control ECU are shielded. So when you're working around these wires, don't poke or damage or rip these uh, shielded leads. The stroke sensor is used to determine the rate. A quick movement means that a panic stop is happening, so we're not going to get any regen from the hybrid controller. A medium movement or a normal movement yields normal braking. So it's not how far we move the brake pedal. It's the rate at which we move the brake pedal. We also have brake assist. In emergency, the driver pushes on the brake pedal quickly and the sensor tells the hybrid control, the skid control uh, ECU that, and the skid control ECU tells the hybrid control. Now on 04 Priuses and later, that's interpreted as an emergency stop. The skid control ECU is going to assist the driver by increasing hydraulic pressure. It's called brake assist system. The yaw rate and the deceleration sensor is going to be mounted somewhere in the center of the vehicle. It's going to be on the center line of the vehicle. It measures lateral forces as well as the forward and the reverse G-forces. 
it has powers and grounds, but its output is not a signal wire. Its output is on the CAN bus. Here is Toyota's version of what's happening in the yaw sensor. Look at the ball in the center, and you can see that as we turn, brake, and accelerate, it moves around the printed circuit board, telling the skid control ECU about lateral and acceleration and deceleration g-forces. We also have a steering angle sensor. Part of the vehicle stability data is needed to control skids. So the skid control receives data through the CAN bus from the steering angle sensor. The angle position of the steering wheel is determined by an opto optical electric steering angle sensor. It has a code transmis transmitter between the light source and the line sensor. Code transmitter between the light source and the line sensor. The sensor, the light signals, has image points along a line at equal intervals. The code transmitting surrounds the steering wheel and is fixed to the steering spindle so that it rotates with it. We have the lights there in a circle and it's facing the sensors that would pick up the lights. We have the printed circuit board down there and we have the actual sensor there. Its output is on the CAN bus. It has powers and grounds but its output is on the CAN bus. The accumulator for the brake assembly stores fluid under pressure that has been generated by the ABS pump for the hybrid brake control. It supplies pressure when the brakes are applied before the pump begins to operate. The reason we can have brake by wire is because the skid control ECU can control the relays to turn the pump on when we need pressure and the pump builds up pressure. But there's some time between stepping on the brake and that pump building up pressure that we need to fill. So the accumulator does that job. We can see that there's the accumulator on a vehicle and there's an accumulator with the cover off showing the accumulator threaded directly into the hydraulic control unit. Now the accumulator pressure sensors are going to measure accumulator pressure. It's an input into the skid control ECU. The master cylinder generates fluid pressure through brake pedal movement and it's going to supply hydraulic brake pressure directly to the brakes in the event of an ABS failure. The stroke simulator generates smooth pedal feel and that's in accordance with the pedal effort during the hybrid braking. Pressure on a confined fluid is equal in all direction and that is a hydraulic law. So as the driver pushes on the pedal, the stroke simulator is controlled by the skid control ECU and however hard he pushes, the hydraulic fluid pushes back giving the driver a simulated stroke of the normal braking when in fact we're braking by wire. There's an actual picture of it. During regenerative braking, fluid flows to the calipers is going to be very very limited. So we have a stroke simulator. We're going to have very little fluid going into calipers. Why? Because we're stopping this vehicle with, with, with regenerative braking. But that could confuse a typical driver so the stroke simulator is going to make it feel like normal braking. So it's located between the master cylinder and the brake actuators, the calipers and or wheel cylinders. The simulator is going to receive fluid from the master cylinder. It has two springs and that's going to provide different pedal characteristics in two stages. So we have the pedal stroke simulator in between the master cylinder and the calipers and or wheel cylinders. The master cylinder pressure sensors 1 and 2 are two pressure sensors that measure master cylinder pressure. It's an input for the skid control ECU and it's used for brake torque calculation. And we're showing you a, a 
drawing of them right there. We also have a relief valve so that we can relieve any excessive brake pressure in the event of a system malfunction that caused braking pressure to be excessive. And here's a typical hydraulic relief valve. On the left, you can see that the spring holds it closed, so the fluid is blocked. And then if the fluid pressure gets too much, it overcomes the spring, and we have free flow. And there it is at the accumulator. We have wheel cylinder pressure sensors, and they're going to measure hydraulic pressure at each wheel. It is input data for the skid control, and that's for friction brake control. And there's our four pressure sensors. We have ABS 1 and 2 relays that supplies power to the solenoids controlled by the skid control ECU as we told you before. It supplies power to the skid control ECU. Supplies power and maintains operating conditions for brake systems when the power switches off. And there's our ABS relay number one and number two. They supply B plus to the pump motors and that's controlled by the skid control ECU. Number one is used for high bread braking. Number two is for ABS braking. And we have an ABS motor relay one there in the picture and two there. Now we have a change over solenoid valve, a master cutout designated SMC1 and 2. It controls hydraulic fluid pressure and that's going to be determined by the operating conditions. The solenoids SMC1 and 2 are closed. They're normally closed and they block master cylinder pressure to the calipers or cylinders when the system is normal. When a problem occurs the solenoids are open and master cylinder pressure is sent to the caliper or the wheel cylinders during the fail-safe operation. There's our SMCs 1 and 2 and both of them are normally closed solenoids. No fluid to the calipers. Looking at those solenoids, we've grayed out that yellow line going to the calipers. So now we have blocked the fluid. There is no fluid directly from the master cylinder to the calipers. When there is a failure with the hybrid braking system, the normally closed solenoids are opened by the skid control computer and fluid flows directly to the calipers and that gives us our fail safe. We have linear SLA and SLR solenoids. They're linear solenoids that are controlled by pulse width management, pulse width modulation from the skid control ECU. They increase and reduce pressure to the brakes. They are current driven much like a, BPP, a BPA on a uh, Ford uh, idle control solenoid. The SLAs work just like the SLRs. The skid control ECU increases current to increase pressure. Now pay attention, this is not a mistake. It increases current to decrease pressure. Going back to the SLA. This is like an isolation valve on steroids in a normal ABS system. If the skid control wants to increase pressure, it increases current to that solenoid, which increases the pressure. Now, if the skid control solenoid has to have the function of a dump solenoid to decay the pressure, it increases current to the SLR, which will decrease pressure. The stoplight switch signals that the brakes are on. It is a redundant type circuit. It has two of them. It illuminates the brake light. The brake warning light, the red one, informs the driver of a brake problem. A hybrid brake problem, a parking brake that's applied, or low brake fluid level. 
The yellow one signals brake system failures that will not influence brake performance. The ABS warning light informs the driver of trouble when we have uh, in the hydraulic braking system or in the hybrid braking system, it says, hey, you're not getting any ABS operation. So braking without ABS is available, just like on a non-hybrid car. Normally closed SMC1s and two valves open to supply fluid under pressure to the caliper and the cylinders. The vehicle Stability control warning light informs the driver the vehicle stability is not functioning. The slip indicator light informs the driver that either the vehicle stability control or the ABS system is active right now. The skid control buzzer, the audio buzzer, informs driver that vehicle stability is operating and that there is trouble with the hydraulic pressure source for braking. Fluid pressure sensors change the brake system pressure into a signal voltage so the skid control ECU can read that. The accumulator pressure sensor should always be higher than the individual brake pressure sensors during normal braking. Use a scan data for pressure indications at each wheel, so pull the PIDs up for the pressure sensors. If you have to do it with a voltmeter, we give you this chart. As pressure increases, the voltage increases. Look at the first one, brake pedals released, and that's what scan data should say there. At 145 PSI, 0.6 to 0.7. At 1450 PSI, 2.4 to 2.7.